All right, everybody. I, I don't know what happened there. I got kicked off of the recording and stuff. So there may be some overlap here and I apologize for that. Uh, let's take a look at this video, this part of the module, which is going to be pretty helpful for you, I hope, in a lot of different areas. Um, this is going to give you some skills about how to read text and how to really get more out of a text. And again, it's not just for this class. It can be for your other classes or it's a skill that you can use in life when you're presented with, with a variety of sources of information. And this is about how to be a critical reader, how to really analyze the text and then how to note it, how to annotate it, how to really get um, uh, some more information out of it so you can use it more effectively. Uh, a couple of things that annotations do for us is obvious. The obvious part is like there's a piece of information. I know where to find it. I know how to go back and get it uh, because I know it's this part right here. Right. Uh, that's important. And that's the first piece of this. But I think that the there's some other piece that annotation do really well for you. And we know that annotations work really well because if we can make you work with the text more, if we can make you get your hands on the text more. You're going to retain it. You're going to remember more. You know, this idea of like, I can tell you how to do a process, but until you do it, you don't really learn it, right? Whether it's cooking a cake or building a house or whatever skill, if you don't do it, you don't really remember it. Well, annotations work in a similar way. The more you put your hands on the text, the more that you have to identify stuff, the more that you have to really read between the lines and, and create that information for yourself, the more you're going to retain we also know too that annotations slow you down we're not trying to make it more difficult we're not trying to make it harder for you to do your work but we are trying to make this something that is going to create in you a path that makes you digest that text more and so if you know that i have to write i have to make these notations i have to identify these these elements it takes you a little bit longer to read, which, uh, you know, isn't, again, we're not trying to make it harder, but it slows you down. You're just not skimming through it to say, I checked the box. I did the task, right? So this video gives you some keys on how to do that and how to make that more effective for you. Okay. Uh, and I do appreciate that video, not just for this uh, or those skills, just for this class, but you can use it in all your classes. Uh, there is a closed research theme check-in. Uh, we're asking you to pick two more readings that you have not read yet. Pick uh, one of these questions and really kind of explain it. Uh, your reactions, your thoughts, your ideas, what was your take from it? Uh, it does say to give like 50 words or so. Um, again, I'm not going through and counting words. I'm like, hey, does this person, did they, did they have a message? Did they have a, a complete thought? Did they really express themselves? Uh, so I'm really looking for that as the... Um, uh, as the response to this. We then have um, a discussion board for this week. And this is the today's big idea panel discussion. And this asks you to put yourself in the author's shoes. You are going to write a post as if you were the expert. Um, and, and again, I said this a little bit earlier, but one of the things that I really uh, try to impress upon a lot of my students is this idea of reading with the uh, with the writer's eye and writing with the reader's eye, putting yourself in the opposite role. If I'm a consumer of this information, can I look at and say, okay, how did the author approach this? Why did the author do these things? What brings the author, what brought the author to this point, right? So I think that's the first thing. Um, but then if I'm writing, I want to be able to put myself in my audience's shoes and like, how are they taking this? How are they receiving it? And what are they saying about me? And, and so this asks you, today's discussion post asks you to take the voice of one of your writers and express that idea as if you're a panel discussion. You're kind of sharing this idea out with uh, the audience, right? The key will be to use that kind of voice. Now, what does that mean? That you use examples similar to, that you use a style similar to, that you really are coming at it from the same perspective as that author. Uh, and then you do need to reply to at least two other people. Remember that what we've talked about before, that we would like you to post your initial post early. Uh, hopefully, you know, by Thursday or Friday this week would be great that you take time over the weekend, the beginning of next week to reply to at least two other people to get the maximum number of points for this assignment. We do want you to post more than the two replies. If you want to get the maximum, you know, you're doing more. 
you're doing it on multiple days, not two days. Like I post on Friday and then I reply on Saturday. We want to see you coming in and out of those discussions. That's the best information, uh, best approach. And then that your posts are really deep and meaningful, meaning that you really are continuing the conversation, that you're adding to uh, what is being shared. Um, I, I do think that a lot of you have done a really good job on the discussion board so far. I think a lot of you are really taking to it. Uh, again, I do want to remind you that we are being critical of the information. We're really kind of analyzing and looking at the information, not debating the topic. And we do want to keep it off of a personal level. We don't want to be attacking people or saying like, you did this bad, because we want to really make sure that people get that critical feedback, but that we're not being hurtful and harmful. OK, uh, so please continue that. And again, we're not looking for, oh, that was a really good job. Right. It was a good job because and then you explain what they did. That was really well. Uh, there is a some information about the elements of the comparative analysis and comparing of text. Uh, this slideshow walks you through those elements and how what some of the big key parts of that are. So you'll get that information as well. Uh, I do believe that that will provide you a lot of guidance on how to approach this paper. There's also a comparative observations worksheet in which you can really use to capture some of that information. After we talk about annotations and being able to critically consume that information. This worksheet here kind of gives you some guidance on how to actually record and capture those key elements that you want to look at. And it kind of walks you through that process a little bit. And then we get to where you will actually turn in the half draft. This is where you will provide us the first attempt at this writing. Again, 450 to 600 words is the minimum. That's your goal if you're doing just the half and you want redirection. If you want more feedback, obviously, the more you can do, the better. 